Thanks. And uh, thanks. Uh, I, I went to the party last night, and I, I met a lot of you, actually, and it was really fun. But I realized a lot of you are pretty young and might not recognize what this is. Uh, it's, it's a library where books are stored. Um, and it, it, it's a fascinating place. You can go in and read stories about our histories and, and our cultures. And, and it's really fantastic in that way, but it's, it's somewhat sad because printing has always been hard throughout our history. And so many of the stories of, of humans that live in the past have, are never going to be told, and, and they're lost forever now. And, and that story is, has really changed over the last 30 years with electronics and computers and the internet. Um, all of the data that we collect and, and, and really has been democratized in, in terms of how we can write information and read information uh, is really changing quickly. And this is, a, this is a, a modern data storage facility where your Facebook feeds, your Twitter feeds are all being stored in. And, and again, this is great, but we're, we're facing a challenge in that as we move more of our lives online and we move more people online, that is really straining our ability to store information. And in order to really show you that, I'm going to have to talk to you a little bit about numbers. So a terabyte is how much is stored in a standard computer hard drive. And then a zettabyte is a billion of those hard drives. Two zettabytes is how, many, how much data we're really holding today in 2012. By 2015, not long from now, that's supposed to be 50 zettabytes of, of information. And that's an astounding number, but it actually it doesn't include all the, the data that we're throwing away on a daily basis that just doesn't get stored. And so, and we're reaching limits on how much information we can store on individual bits on, on surfaces such as these because we're re reaching the atomic level. And so bringing that even, even deeper is going is to be hard because we're, we're reaching fundamental limits. And, and so we have to think of new ideas on how to store information. So I'm not an electrical engineer or a computer scientist even. I am a biologist. And I study uh, cells and, and the information that's stored in within them that specify biological information. And that's DNA. So what you're seeing here is a cell and, and a chromosome and, and DNA coming off of it. And, and literally, it's a sequence of ACs, Ts, and Gs. And that stores biological information for who we are and, um, and, and, and for all of life. So, what we decided to do is say, you know, in, rather than storing biological information, could we store digital information? Could we store the ones and zeros that are in all of our, all of our uh, modern digital media? And so we did that. So we, we took this book, um, which is a book by my collaborator on this project, George Church, called Regenesis. And it's on how synthetic biology might be changing the world in the future. And uh, we encoded it in, in DNA uh, using some of the same technologies that we use to uh, study the human genome, read and write the human genome. And so this is a tube that contains many copies of that DNA. And we did this beyond just the, I guess, a elaborate PR stunt for the book. But uh, uh, there, there was real reason to this. And, and just to briefly go over what we actually did, um, we took the book. It's a series of ones and zeros on your computer, including images and text. We convert that using a code that we developed to ACs, Ts, and Gs, and that we can synthesize using some of the same modern genomic technologies that we use to, that we've been developing to read and write the human genome. And, um, but the really fantastic part about DNA is that it's incredibly dense. So the 1.8 zettabytes of information I was talking about earlier would fit in about, theoretically, in about 10 grams of, of DNA, and so about the weight of a pencil. Um, and DNA lasts a long time. We've been able to recover samples over half a million years old from uh, rotting corpses, essentially. And so, so it is a very stable medium, and, and it compares well to uh, existing ways of storage. Um, lastly, some of you have been, might have watched the Colbert Report. Um, this is, it's really easy to make copies of biological things. So DNA, this is 20 million copies. The, the tube I showed you before was about 7 billion copies of the book. Um, and it fits literally on a dried piece of paper. Um, and Colbert was trying to eat it with George, trying to stop it on, on the clip. Um, uh, so I, I, so in, in general, this is uh, the types of stuff we do. And we, we, we again, we look to biology to solve these problems. One of the, the reason why we're not going to do this tomorrow is basically because it's a million-fold too expensive um, compared to current technologies. But we're, we're getting closer. And about, we've seen about a million-fold drop over the last 10 years. And so continuing that trend would be 
very exciting, and we could see some of these new technologies pop forward. So finally, I just want to say um, we've, we've reached a stage where we, we look to biology. We look to biology to solve some of the, the real world problems that we see out there that we're going to be talking about today. And, um, and thank you for letting me be here. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, man.